Do you have a library that you're trying to integrate into your Next.js app but are stuck because that library doesn't support server-side rendering? My name is Otto and in this video I'll show you how to fix that using Next.js dynamic imports. Let's do it. All right, so let's talk about dynamic import functionality that comes with Next.js. Next.js does support ES2020's dynamic import for JavaScript, and you can think of dynamic imports as just another way for you to split your code into manageable chunks, but also it's a way that you can use other libraries created by other people in your Next.js application. And perhaps the biggest use of dynamic imports that I've seen for Next.js is when you're trying to load a library in your application that does not support server-side rendering by default. And uh, if you were to just try to import this library in your application, you would get an error and your application would crash. But luckily the Next.js docs have a lot of different examples on how to handle this. So we go from basic usage to dealing with named imports. And then perhaps the biggest one is this with no SSR, uh, which is gonna allow us to work with our components and bring in React libraries that don't support uh, server-side rendering, but still be able to use them in our Next.js applications, just like we would. So I've been hacking around on a little project the last couple of days that actually uses a couple libraries that don't work well with server-side rendering. And I wanted to show you how I solved the issues in my Next.js application, and hopefully these are applicable to you. <clears throat> so I'm gonna open up Visual Studio Code, and I have this page called write.js, which is a code editor. And I'm trying to import Code Mirror as well as the Plotly library that's gonna allow me to generate some, uh, some plots and graphs. So Code Mirror, if you're not familiar, we can take a look at their site really quickly, uh, allows you to have a code editor within the browser. And this is traditionally a JavaScript library that was converted into a React component by uh, this user, uh, Sal Nero, and his library React-CodeMirror2 works really, really great if you're building a React application. But if you're trying to use it in a Next.js app, you might run into some issues. And then the second library we'll work with is called Plotly. And again, this was a traditionally JavaScript library that has a uh, React wrapper around it called React-Plotly. So I have both of these libraries installed, uh, imported in my Next.js project. And right now I'm just trying to import them the old fashioned way. So just running import, getting the name of the export, and then trying to use it in my application. So in my component here, I'm trying to load in code mirror and then below here, trying to load in um, the, the Plotly library. So if we were to build and launch this application in its current state, we would get a couple of errors. So let's actually do that and see what we get. So I'm gonna open up my terminal here and just run npm run dev. And the application is going to compile, but when I go to access my application in the browser, I'm gonna get a couple of issues. So let's go back into the browser. I'm gonna navigate to localhost, 3000 and then the right page. And I'm gonna get a server error right away saying that the document is not defined. And in the call stack here, if I look at it, I see most of my errors coming from the Plotly package. And the reason for this is by default on the server side, document does not exist. It is a browser construct. So without a document on the back end. I can't use the Plotly library. And this is where the next dynamic package is gonna come in and allow us to only load this package on the client side and not on the server side. So to show you how this works, let's go back into Visual Studio Code and we are going to, first let's fix the, the Plotly example because right now this is our biggest blocker. And the way that we're gonna do that is first we're going to import the dynamic library from the from Next.js. So to do this, we're gonna run import dynamic from next dynamic. So this is gonna give us uh, the ability to import modules dynamically using Next.js. And then we're gonna update our Plotly import to use this new dynamic feature that, that we brought in. All right, so let's use this dynamic function that we brought in from next dynamic. To do this, what we're gonna do is 
we're going to set our import to a variable. So we'll say const plot, and we're gonna set it to the dynamic function, which takes two parameters. The first parameter is gonna be a function. <clears throat> so we'll just call a function, and the second parameter is going to be an options item. So for right now, we'll just pass in an empty, uh, empty object, and what we're gonna return in the function that we call is gonna be our ES2020 import statement. So we're gonna say uh, return import, and we're importing the React Plotly.js library. And then in our object, we're going to specify uh, server-side rendering, and we're gonna say false. So we only want the Plotly library to load on the client side and not on the server side. And then we're gonna delete the import statement that we had before hit save, let our application rebuild, and then let's go back into our browser and see if this uh, fixed our Plotly issue. So let's go back into our browser, and I already am seeing the new fancy plot. If I refresh the page, um, I see that my application has loaded now. But if I inspect my element and look at the console, I'm gonna see another error saying, uh, expected server HTML to contain a matching div in div, and this error actually comes from the code mirror library that, that we brought in. This one also uh, was able to render on the client side, but we're not able to get the syntax highlighting that we would expect, and we're also getting this error, which for right now is not breaking our build, but if we were to continue using it, it can give us trouble down the line. So the next thing we're gonna do is go into our Next.js code and fix that code mirror import to be loaded dynamically using the Next Dynamic library. All right, so here we are back in Visual Studio Code and uh, let's fix our code mirror import to make sure that it also loads dynamically using the dynamic package. This one is gonna look very similar to our Plotly import, but there will be some changes. So let's go through those. We'll start off just like we did with the Plotly example. We'll say const code mirror, and then we're gonna set its value to dynamic, make it an arrow function, and then pass in that second options parameter. We'll set the SSR to false, but here's where things get uh, a little tricky. The code mirror library by default is gonna give us uh, two different ways to import code mirror into our application, a controlled way and an uncontrolled way. So if we were to just do something like, uh, you know, return import uh, react code mirror to, save it just like what we did in code mirror to, save this and um, try to run our application, we're gonna run into an issue. And let's see what that issue is. Well, first of all, I need to spell dynamic correctly. And then let's turn this off. Or just comment out that initial import. Now, if we go into our browser, we're gonna see an error. And if we refresh our page, uh, we see that the element type is invalid and our page doesn't load. And the reason for this is we have to specify whether we want controlled or uncontrolled from the React code mirror library. And at the moment, we do not do that. To do this with the ES2020 import style statements, as well as the next dynamic package, what we can do is in our import here, run a then function. And this then function is going to get us uh, that library. So we'll get the module out of it. And then when we return the module, what we're gonna return Rather than the whole library, we're just going to return mod.controlled. And if you were looking at the um, autocomplete, we have controlled and uncontrolled. So now with this then statement, we are exporting the controlled code mirror instance that we want and not the entire library. So if we go back into our code now, refresh, we should see what we expect. And we do. Our application has loaded correctly. We can refresh and we can see our changes and everything works really, really well. Now we just have one last issue that may not be directly apparent in the UI. And if we refresh our console here, we're not even gonna see it. But if we go into our Visual Studio code and look at the terminal output, we'll see that we are getting this unhandled, unhandled promise rejection error. 
and it is telling us that navigator is not defined. And this issue is coming from our code mirror mode packages. And the reason we're seeing these issues, if you're not familiar with these types of imports, what we're doing here is importing a library, and in this case, the GitHub flavored markdown and the YAML front matter libraries, but we only want them for their side effects. We only want their code to execute and be able to run in our application. We're not getting anything specific out of them or using any of their elements. So for that reason, we wouldn't be able to use this uh, dynamic way of loading in the library without it causing issues. But what we could do here to get rid of our errors is just check to see if we are in the browser and if we are, then we can import the modules. Otherwise, uh, we're gonna skip it. So to do this, we're just gonna write a simple if statement. So we'll say if type of window is not undefined and and type of window.navigator is also not undefined, then we are going to import these two libraries. So I'm gonna hit save here. And now what this is gonna do is it's going to ensure that when our Next.js component is loaded, if it's not in the browser, then these libraries are not gonna be imported and these errors should go away. So I see that my app has compiled successfully. Let's go back in here, refresh the page, and we see that we get the nice syntax highlighting. If we were to add uh, some you know, GitHub flavored markdown or YAML, we would get those things. So let's say title, hello. So everything in our code editor works really, really well. And if we look at Visual Studio Code, we no longer see uh, any navigator errors. And you might be asking yourself, well, why don't I just import Code Mirror or the React Plotly library uh, using this if statement? And the reason for that is if you are importing a library, if you just want it for the side effects and you're doing this kind of import, that's gonna work. But if you try to import this way, you're trying to get a value out of it, then your application will not run and it's going to crash because your import statements must be at the root level of the page. So if I were to just hit save here, uh, you'll see that import and export may only appear at the top level. And that's really all I had for this video. I hope you found it useful. Uh, Next.js is a really, really powerful framework and and it's a framework that's built on top of React. And React has traditionally been a single page application framework that runs entirely in the browser. So many libraries that are built around React are not made for server-side rendering. So you are very likely gonna run into these issues sooner rather than later. And I hope that this video showed you how to get around it and work with those libraries and ensure that they can be loaded in your Next.js application so you get the best of both worlds. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.